All right, guys, what's up? So I drove all the way to Fort Worth from Houston. It's like a four hour drive, 200 something miles to visit my friend Clayton here. He actually is the one who went with me to Tennessee to pick up the Supra. He hasn't driven it since then. And having just got it back from the shop with a new clutch and all the stuff we did to it, uh, I just want to get his reaction on driving it. Uh, we just filled up on E85, so we're at about 60% ethanol rating. We'll see how this goes. Oh, okay. we got my hair caught in the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start it up, boy. Okay, so starting it, we have to turn on the ignition, but not crank the car. That way we let the fuel pump prime. So now that that's happened, the pump is primed. He can go ahead and start it. Dang, bro. Wait, why is it squeaking? Ah, there we go, okay. <laughs> Wait, turn off the AC. There we go. What do you think? That sounds insane. I literally can't believe that's the same car. That thing barely made it home from Tennessee. <laughs> Dude, the oh throttle, my gosh. The, the throttle cable all the way from home from Tennessee was like, there had so it, much slack in oh, it. Oh, it was it, moving like 25%. It's not quite warmed up, but right, so right here's the water temperature. Basically once that reaches like 184, it's warmed up. But since it's a little bit warm, we can go ahead and start driving it. Okay. okay. Oh my gosh, that clutch is so heavy. Dang, bro. It's like a race clutch on there. Almost stalled it. Oh, yep, there we I go. Thought, I literally thought you were going <laughs> to stall it. Oh man, it sounds so good. This is literally not the same car. I love it. After this truck passes us, just uh, shift a second and then... Uh, Oh, jeez. <laughs> Gunning up this hill a little bit. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. it almost came out from behind. It broke, yeah, broke loose a little bit. Okay. So, what are we looking at? Some lean. Oh. Uh, got that lean henny and coke. So it's coming together. This is Brandon's drift car. Uh, it actually looks a lot like it's, you cleaned up. Well, there's no more engine harness, so. Yeah, no, I'm not the type of guy to throw shade anyone's way, but a certain shop built a piss poor quality engine harness. And long story short, for those that are somewhat familiar with electrical, the um, two crank sensors on this car have ground wires that, you know, power hall effect sensors for using that sort of thing. Those were actually, uh, Hand into a positive output on the ECU, fried the sensor, and there were actually um, there were a few positives on the ECU that were actually spliced to grounds on the ECU. Not really sure how in the hell that happened, but those circuits weren't being used at the time. They were just kind of rolled up and not being used. So once I unrolled them, plugged them into this, you know whatever sensors and systems I'm using, it kind of fried and killed the uh, ECU harness and. Uh, Honestly, I think it's for the better because that previous... It, it was just trash. Everything yeah. was trash. And people are going to say, well, how did you not see that it was spliced like that before? Because that section of it where it was spliced had heat shrink over it. Yeah. It was already loomed up. And it so was an tell. absolute mess. Oh, dude. dude. It, like, was it looked like, like shit. Yeah. That and then... Uh, the and chassis the, harness, too. The chassis harness is garbage. So I'm going to be, you know, plasma cutting him a new center panel here as well as that. Cleaning up the whole car. I made him a little battery tray. and going to redo everything. Make nice. this car what it should have been the first time around. So this is like what's left of the chassis harness. I need to basically make a replica of that, but mil spec, and weatherproof, and install it into the car. I need to pull out the rest of what's not being used here. Not, you know, not terrible, but you know, there's a bit of work involved. But it's pretty know. tedious. Yeah, I'd say about two weeks or so, two and a half weeks, it'll be done. Car will be rolling. Dude, the coffee's amazing, actually. I really like it. Good. Dude, these welds. So nice. I can't wait to get my RX-7 in here, but unfortunately, because I did just buy the Tesla, that set me back quite a bit. So I've got to save back up before I can bring my RX-7 in here to be worked on and finally finished. Originally, I was actually going to drop it off around like this week or next week. Now, it probably won't be until like maybe April or May. That's if I can get all my finances in order uh, after having just bought this Tesla. But it'll still be this year, that's for sure. Hopefully, the first half of this year. Uh, 
and I have to feel it out. Stretch them like that. So this is the core. When you do concentric wire twisting, you gotta start with the core, which is usually gonna be like um, filtered grounds, filtered wires, or sensitive wires like crank sensor, that sort of thing. Anything that's very sensitive to EMI interference. For example, this would be your crank sensor and a couple of SPIs on a Haltech harness. Your next go around, you might start twisting in some of your standard sensors like MAP, TPS, you know, drive-by wire, wiring, you know, all that other stuff. Other thing when you're doing braided wire like this or concentric twisting, which is the correct name, every time you do one row, your next outer layer has to be twisted in the opposite direction. Hmm. So every layer you have to do the opposite. So you can see here, I'm going to have to do one more mm -hmm. in the same direction. If I was to do another layer, once this one is sealed, then it starts to go in the opposite direction. It makes the harness not want to twist. This cancels mm. out the twisting of the other. But you see how many wires I dude, I'm up to like tw almost 20 wires in here. Look at how skinny it is. Yep, get it like right there. Yeah. As tight as you can. Yeah, it's super flexible. Yep. That's neat. Damn, that's cool. Yeah. You're a wizard, Harry.